I'm trying to piece together because there's little things about you in your life early on. There, there's your upbringing. There's you know the fact that you were playing or were leaning to play professional rugby. Um, if it was not for meningococcal that got in the way of that. Yeah. Um, wh- tell me about Perth to Melbourne. What, when did this sort of cross paths? Yeah, man. Like I was, so I wanted to play rugby league growing up, and then you know I. I was very, I've been very transient just before I opened up my first gym. So, you know, I, I sort of got meningococcal. I lost my football contract. I moved back to Perth and my football coach was actually working for a company called Fitness First. And he was the regional manager over here for all of the, you know, gyms. And he was like, man, your life is not over. It's just starting. <laughs> and it's like, it's okay. You might not play rugby league professionally, but maybe it was pushing you in a new direction. And, you know, you love health and fitness. So why don't you become a personal trainer? So I started the first like nine months inside Fitness First in Perth and he said, you should come to Melbourne now and be a manager for me. So that was the first initial move to Melbourne is I came over here and became a manager for one of the RBT, uh, one of the Fitness First gyms and I was living in St. Kilda working in Knox and I didn't have a car. Jesus. So I was like, he set me up bad. <laughs> um, Why St. Kilda Beach? Well, I moved in with him. So I ah, moved okay, in with okay. him and we were good mates and um, he was kind of like my first mentor. And then that was the first move to Melbourne. And then from that, I ended up you know, looking after a couple of clubs. It was in Burke Street, then Melbourne Central. And then I looked after the QV and then I sort of clustered four of the clubs in the city here. And um, I was like, you know what, I'm out of Melbourne. And then I moved to Sydney. I started playing football again, like rugby league again. Um, but then I realized that it's not for me. And I got so many injuries in the space of a, a a couple of years I moved back to Perth and I moved back to Melbourne again I just like everything kept pulling me back to Melbourne I found again I like the slow down nature of Perth uh, but I like the opportunity that Melbourne provides mm. that must be really hard for you you were saying you're an ambivert that's something I've got as well I've always got this archetype of this incredibly hard-working business person in my head but also the fact that I am a person of leisure mm. as well How do you sort of battle with that? Yeah, it's interesting, man. Like, I I think I sort of say to Liv, like, um, when I I look at it, for me, like, I I love putting on a show. Um, So, like, you know, I guess that's when I I became a personal trainer and then group training and then, you know, training staff and doing seminars that we do now and all the rest of it with the other businesses. I can put on a show, but putting on a show also takes it out of me so much. Um, But over the last year and a half, I haven't had really much time to decompress. So... I say to live my wife, it's like, I'm like a racehorse. Like if you race, you run your racehorse too much, you, you're going to end up putting it down. Mm. Um, so I was like, I need to manufacture, and we do. Uh, it's just been a hectic year and a half. But, you know, we go for sprints. And it's like, okay, let's sprint the next 12 weeks. Then let's have a week of downtime. Uh-huh. Um, let's have three days off every month. So it's like, take a Friday and actually decompress and, you know, get ready for the next month and attack that, you know, with full gusto. Um, and again, like I think my... And people are like, what do you do for a hobby? I was like, I don't really have hobbies anymore. Yeah. I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. <laughs> um, so I was like, my weekends and my time with them, that is really the time I do get to decompress. Like, I'm all in on everything I do. And when I'm with my kids, it's like I'm all in. I'm like, there's swimming, there's obviously parties, there's karate, there's gymnastics, there's, and they're five and two right now. Like, man, yeah. when they get older, hectic things are going to happen. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing. Lauren and I have enjoyed, because I think it was um, Livia, Mm. Uh, Orkowski that um, originally introduced us and we've we've been enjoying watching yourself and Liv raise two boys because Laura and I are getting sort of near that age, you know, getting married next year, kids won't be far after that and thinking about how do you do, because you you both run this, run businesses together, right? Yeah, man. Um, It's a hard thing to manage. I like the fact that you always, or at least regularly enough, post about the fact that you have a date night yeah man we do that every friday every friday man um so you know we we would decompress and then go get dinner somewhere or something like that uh what's your favorite thing to decompress with with the kids is it going to the market is it going Um, by the beach 
Yeah, man, like it's a hard one, right? Like I think for us, like the play centers are the biggest thing for me. Like I get to be a kid, like we'll go to Bounce or we'll go to, um, you know, what are they? These is like there's Bounce, there's like the inflatable worlds and you get to just jump around, not yeah. worry about anything. You're fully present in the moment. You have to be present in the moment because you're literally bouncing off something into the air and you don't want your kid to kill himself at the same time. So you just have fun for like two hours and you can't think of anything else. And I think growing up, I used to surf and it's a little bit harder here because you have to drive and I don't yeah. really I don't really create the time for it but um, surfing was such a, a decompression time for me growing up to have my own space sit in the surf and it doesn't even matter if the surf was good you're just sitting in the ocean by yourself with your own thoughts and I think now it's like you know, you get to, you know, when you're in the markets, there's always a million things going on. <laughs> uh, it's like trying to make people not kill each other. Um, but like, Particularly at, South Melbourne. Market, yeah, oh, man, yeah. it's hectic. Um, but when you're looking at like these play centers, you're fully in, like immersed in with the kids. And, you know, the thing I love about kids is, Everything, no matter what, is exciting to them. Yeah. And there's so many firsts and you get to experience these firsts with them. And I think, you know, if we all attacked the world the same way kids attacked the world when they're young, because they don't have all these um, ideas that are filled with doubt and fear and, and everything else that society gives them, like we'd be happier people. I yeah. Think.